Hello and welcome to ERPWebTutor.com. This is Aridip. And in this tutorial, we will talk about the reporting entities. Now, this tutorial is very important and it is, it is very important for you to uh, listen to this tutorial very carefully because this is kind of a very essential knowledge that you need to have in order to do any kind of Oracle applications set up as a functional analyst. So on the left hand side of this slide, we have the reporting entities, which has the business groups, organizations, operating units, employees, location, set of books. And on the right hand side, we see that we have responsibilities and we can see that the responsibility is linked to these, uh, to these reporting entities. So we will talk about this in the next uh, slides. And we talked about how a user has a responsibility assigned to him. And based on this responsibility security, you can perform certain actions. So let's move ahead and see what we have. The Oracle applications organization models define organizations and the relationships among them in an arbitrarily complex enterprise. This organization model serves as a cornerstone for all the Oracle application products. So this setting up the organizational structure or the hierarchy model in Oracle apps is very crucial. It dictates how transactions flow through different organizations and how those organizations interact with each other. So the way you design your organization hierarchy, that will dictate how the information is going to flow across the organizations. Generally, a complex enterprise has several organization structures, such as internal accounting and human resources. And that's fairly simple. You can understand that if I, if I imagine a big company, it will have all different organizations uh, looking after the different work that is necessary for that company. So you should be able to define structures to customize Oracle applications according to your business needs. So you can set up your uh, N number of organizations and then uh, structure them so that you can map that Oracle setup to your existing business. So what are the business needs we have here? See, we need to understand that a single installation of Oracle applications product to support any number of organizations, even if these organizations are using a different set of books. So you can be a huge uh, global corporate giant having offices all over the world, and you just need to have one Oracle applications product for your entire company, and you can set all these organizations specific to each country or locations within a single installation. So you can define different organizational models. You can support multiple legal entities. So if you have two different companies uh, following two different set of books and also listed as separate uh, tax identities, you can achieve that. You can also achieve security of data among users. So based on the securities assigned and to the responsibility, you can prevent the users from accessing certain information. And also you can do things like selling products from one legal entity that uses one set of books and ship them from another legal entity using a different set of books and automatically record the appropriate intercompany sales by posting intercompany accounts payables and accounts receivable invoices. So basically what we're talking about here is you can have uh, one comp one office or one entity that uh, books the order and then you can have a warehouse which is actually shipping the product and these two can be two different entities and you can also purchase products through one legal entity and receive them in another legal entity so you can order from one office and you can receive them in a different office so let's say you need some papers for your uh, say field office, and then you're ordering this from your corporate office. So basically you are uh, doing the transaction from one legal entity and then receiving those products in a different legal entity. 
So the major features, as we saw in the previous slide, just summing up, is multiple organizations in a single installation, secure access, you can sell and ship products from different legal entities, you can purchase and receive products between organizations, you can do automatic accounting for internal requisitions, and you can also do multiple organizations reporting. So you can have a reporting structure defined on your organizational hierarchy, and you can run reports for these different hierarchies. So let's talk about the types of, our, of organizations. The business group is the most important part of your organization. So basically, the business group represents the highest level in the org structure, such as the consolidated enterprise, uh, a major division, or an operating company. So basically, if you have 10 different locations in 10 different countries performing all different kinds of work, it's still the, the, the parent company that represents this whole business that is running across the world. So that's the business group. So uh, it also secures your HR information, example, viewing of employees across business group. So let's say you have uh, the big company uh, which is running its business all over the world. So you have one business group set up for the US, you have one business group set up for China, you have one business group set up for the UK or Middle East. So, so these are all the different business groups or the main operation based across geographical locations that you have defined in your system. And then you can see the information of your employees within your own business group and you can actually tweak your system to actually have access to employee information across business group. But we will talk about those when we, you know, do actual HRMS setups and then we will understand a lot more. So for the time being, business group is the top level uh, concern or the top level the business name of your company. Next comes the legal entity. So this is the legal company for which you prepare your fiscal or tax reports or you assign the tax identifiers to this org. So basically this is something like you have a tax identification number and that is acting as your legal entity. You can have multiple legal entities for your organization. So you can have one business group with multiple legal entities. Next comes operating unit. So it's an org that uses uh, the main transactional features of Oracle such as Oracle cash management, order management, payables, purchasing, receivables, etc. So it may be a sales office, a division, or a department. An operating unit is usually associated with a legal entity, and the information is secured by operating unit for these applications that we mentioned, like uh, the, the receivables, purchasing, cash management, etc. So each user sees information that belongs to their operating unit. To run any of these applications, you choose a responsibility associated with an org which is classified as an operating unit. It is very important to note here is that all these organizations or the types of organizations are called organizations in Oracle. They are classified as a business group or a legal entity or an operating unit. So basically you will hear the term that, okay, this is the operating unit, this is a business group, but you need to know that they are all defined in one single place called organization setup, and you classify them as business group or legal entity or whatever you want to classify them as. So the next part, we are talking about the inventory organization. So it is an org for which you track inventory transactions and balances, and uh, and or an organization that manufactures or distributes products you know for example you have a big company you have your corporate office and then you have a warehouse so this warehouse can be classified as an inventory organization 
Now we're talking about the HR organization. So this represents the basic work structure of any enterprise. They usually represent the, the functional management or the reporting groups that exists within the business group. Uh, just you need to note one thing here that you need to classify an organization as an HR organization if you want to associate employees with that org. So let's say you have a company called Demo Global, which is defined as a business group, and you want to place the CEO or the CIO or the CFO of that company that, I mean, you're trying to put them under that business group itself. If that business group is not classified as an HR org, you cannot associate any employees with that group or with that org. Now, set of books. It's a financial reporting that uses a particular chart of accounts, uh, like a functional currency and uh, accounting calendar. Oracle General Ledger secures uh, its transactional information, like uh, the general entries, balances, etc., by set of books. So when we select an Oracle General Ledger, we choose the responsibility that is specific to the books. So you can see the information that is belonging to that set of books. Again, it's most likely going to be an organization which is being classified or which has the set of books added to it. So let's move on and see what else we have. So we have balancing entity that represents an accounting entity uh, for which we prepare financial statements. Now there can be multiple companies which act as balancing entities. And in this case, each of these must balance within itself. The last classification of organization would be an asset organization. An asset organization is an organization that allows us to perform asset related activities for a specific Oracle asset depreciation book. So you can have uh, like a company which you can have your corporate office classified as an asset org where you're keeping a track of the assets that you have, like your computers, your printers, your desks, and all the things that you have purchased and maintaining within the org. So if we just go back to all of these different classifications, we can imagine a situation where the business group is itself a legal entity, it's itself an HR org, it can be an asset org. So basically, our organization name, for example, is Demo Global. It has been classified as a business group. If that itself is acting as a legal entity, it can be classified as a legal entity. If it itself is acting as an operating unit, it can be classified as an operating unit. But most likely, you're going to have one demo setup which will be classified as a business group and then you'll have different organizations underneath that which are classified as legal entities or operating units but in most situations you would probably keep all the organizations classifications enabled with your hr organization so just in case you want to add employees to a particular org you you'll be able to do that so that's very important so these are the different types of organizations that you'll be working with. And remember, if you're working on HRMS modules and you're dealing with employees, you must classify your organization as an HR organization. So that's, uh, that's about it for this tutorial. And this tutorial, as I repeat, is, is very crucial. Understanding of these processes are very important if possible, you can download some Oracle documents and read more and make sure that you understand these concepts. So we will come again with uh, new tutorials. Until then, happy learning Oracle apps.